Hallelujah. The reading from the Holy Bible. The reading of that which the Apostle John wrote when he was in the Isle of Patmos. He was the elder of the Gehila of Yeshua Hamashi. The only one of the apostles that died a natural death and not for the lack of trying to kill him. They did put him in a pot of boiling oil, but he came out vigorously and then they, they put him on the Isle of Papos and then later he, he, after receiving the letters to the seven churches in Asia, Minor, then he was sent back and he was eventually breathed his last at 120 years of age and was buried in Ephesus. But this one passage I want to read from the end of the book of Revelation. In chapter 22, verse 14 reads in English from the New King James Version of the whole Bible. It says, Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gate into the city for outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. We find it is this course in the 13th chapter of the Matthew. We find that the, at the end of the age of the reign of man over the earth, when the King of Glory comes with his angels, there's going to be elimination of the wicked. And the righteous will inherit the earth. Those who call upon the name of Jehovah will be spared, but then there's going to be a separation of it. Those who are faithful and true and those who are hypocrites. The separation of the goats and the sheep. Now some have a question and a, and a doubt. Now, if you're going to believe the Bible, you can't believe only 99% but there's something in there you don't believe. Either you believe all of it or you don't believe any of it. I believe the Holy Bible because I met the author. He came and visited me when I was 19 years of age. And it's out of life. I heard a great company and then I heard Father speak to me. And I heard in his voice, in his presence, I could discern his wisdom and his authority. And, and I perceived, even at age 19, just hearing the voice of the Almighty, that he knew my every molecule. And there was absolutely no justification I could give to him for my uh, immoral lifestyle. And that up to that time. Now, he came and visited me after a time when I was 19, when I had repented of sexual immorality. He, he had placed his finger upon the, my life and I have recognized it and repented of my sin. And it wasn't long after that, that summer day in 1980, he came and visited me and he said, you say you know me, but you know my son and what he's done for you. And, and this question is so profound to understand that the Lord became flesh and dwelt among us. The Son of God was revealed among us to bear the weight and penalty of our sins. Now he took all place in execution that we may live and not perish. Oh, if you read it in the 18th chapter of Ezekiel, you, listen, you read a whole list of sins section. They continue to hell. The Father said he's not pleased with the death of his soul. He said the soul that sins shall die. But he's not pleased with the death of his soul. But we for all come to repentance. Because he loves all his children. And the Father doesn't sacrifice on the children's destruction. But on his children being delivered 
from the very pit that they dig. You know, when a soul, and I say a soul, it can be man or woman, child. But when you get to recognize that you dug yourself into a pit and you can't get out. In other words, you may, you dug your own grave, and it's deep, and, and you can't dig your way out. And, and there's something as a laborer, I, I, I used to work on the main guest club, and uh, I worked one time, I worked for a man who, uh, I didn't trust him. He, he was paying minimum wage, and he wanted me to dig an elevator shaft, and he wanted me to make it extra deep. And I figured, you know, this man, might not want to pay me at the end of the day and just covered me up in here. So I would, I would, I stopped working. I mean, I did not, I left my way of escape and I came out, out of that pair before it got to a point where I was in a pit that couldn't get out of. Now I might not have been justified in, in uh, my evaluation of the situation, but it's a very real thing that when you have broken the laws of the universe, the only justification can come is you pardon of sin, forgiveness, unmerited favor, unmerited grace. The love of the Father say, and when you confess your fault and say, I sinned before you, Father, and you, you don't try to make excuse for it, but you just ask you seek his love and favor, kindness and mercy. When you come to a place where you're ready to turn away from your wicked ways, to cease to do evil and learn to do good, and, and, and then you still can't justify the wrong you've done. And in a, in a court of law, yeah, if you can commit a crime and then you found out 35 years later, you commit a murder and you think you got away with it, but after it can be decades later, but when they find you out, uh, it doesn't matter if you say you, you have your new person, they know they're going to they're, they're gonna penalize you to the uh, full intent of the law. But our Heavenly Father, He looks to redeem. Now Paul, he was a murderer. He was a rabbi and he killed Christians. Before his conversion, he was a murderer. He thought he was doing God a favor because he was a he was doing it according to his religion. But you know, some, some a lot of different religious folk that have killed people, but not according to the will of the Father, but according to their religion. And they become as murderers. But Paul was struck with a bright light. He was struck blind. He was blind for three days. And when it, he asked who it was, and it, and it was revealed to him that this one who he was coming against, this one they called Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, he, he was fighting, he was dragging people out of their homes and, and putting them to death. And then he comes to find out that this one, Yeshua HaMashiach, is the same Jehovah the Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. And he was converted. Now he didn't eat or drink until he got his sight back. He'd been killing a lot of folk, and there's a lot of folk who wanted him dead. But he did not drink, he didn't, he didn't trust anybody to eat or drink anything until he got his sight back. And it was by the spirit of Jehovah, with a deacon, with a, with a bishop of Damascus laying hands on him, that he received his sight. And later, you read the book of Acts, where Paul also, he both cursed where people went blind and also people received the hearing and received the sight. The power, the authority of the apostle was given, and we can read about it in the, uh, Matthew chapter 16, the authority to, to bind and to loose. But again, that's if we're going to believe the Bible. Now, if you say you believe the Bible, but you you don't believe that there's a heaven, that you don't believe in the, in the, in the Ten Commandments, then you don't believe the Bible. If you say you believe the Bible, but you don't believe there's a hell, 
I mean, you don't believe the Bible, and you have some other different kind of oh, things, for you. ideology. Why do you come when they're here? I I was, I've been preaching down here. I've been preaching. I was, I was out for two months. I've been preaching down here since 1988. 1988. I was gone for two months. I've been, I've been, I was preaching here long before they came here. And they, yeah. I'm not, I'm not a follower of the watchtower. I am a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ who healed my body and told me to preach his kingdom. Now, I, I can understand people that say that they weren't called to preach and they don't preach, but I was called to preach. I was told to preach in the street. So, therefore, I preach in the street. I, I've prayed for the sick and people have been healed. I've seen miracles and I've received miracles. And so, I come as an eyewitness that there is a God in heaven. His name is Jehovah, he who was and is and forever shall be. He sent his word, his word became flesh and dwelt among us. Of the Elohim, Jehovah was manifested in the flesh among us. He was more than a man, but he was wrapped in flesh and he lived among us as a man. And he said that the things that he did, we would also do in his name because he came to teach by example the authority of the kingdom. He told me to preach his holy kingdom. And in, in this kingdom, there's a standard of love, standard of righteousness, standard of dignity. Uh, I was noticing some, uh, a group of young Baptists family there out ministering a couple blocks away and I, th I thought it was beautiful and there's some young ladies with their bust and pair they're not, they're not all trying to be sexy and all that but they're secure in their relationship with the Father in heaven and home. I find that to be beautiful. But today we have a lot of different ways that Humanity has strayed from holiness. We were created in the image and the likeness of the Elohim. We were created in the beauty of holiness. But corruption makes the bottom. Grace washes away the bottom. For those who repent, there is a way of escape from the path that leads to everlasting shame and death. While we are yet in the land of the living, we have opportunity through the Lord Jesus Christ to walk away from the devil. Today, you may feel it's your personality to do what's wrong. You, you don't understand why you're so mean. You don't understand why every other word is a customer. You don't, may not understand it, but there's a war going on in this earthly plane. You see everything from the ground to the, to the clouds above. That's called the first heaven. And, and within this first heaven, there's a lot of spiritual things going on. There's a spiritual realm, but it's not, not all of heaven. There are demons waging war against the Most High by trying to destroy as many souls as they can. Because they know their Father loves all his children, so they're trying to destroy all the children of the Most High. But we are given a free will and ability to choose. Now if the devil could kill us, it would be done. But over, but no, there's a test and there's a trial. We are tested and tried to see what we choose in life. And you need to live it according to the lie up until this very hour, this very moment. You may believe what people tell you about you, so people look down on you and say everything but you're a child of God. But if you would believe in the report from heaven to know that your father loves you, and created you in the beauty of holiness. Man and woman were created in the 
image of the person of the Elohim. You can read that in the very first chapter of Genesis. When Father said, let us make man in our image. Male and female will we made. It's read from the book of Revelation, talking about a division of those that enter and those who don't enter the kingdom. You can read about it in the 18th chapter of Ezekiel. You can read about it in 1 Corinthians 6 chapter 9 is a list. And you know, it's interesting, Paul went and talked about how many in Corinthians had formerly been living in a way that led to death. He said, know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And there's only two places there. When you breathe your last, you're either going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. And the hell was not created for man, but it was enlarged for all the sons of disobedience, sons and daughters, should I say. The lake of fire was created for those angels that followed the Lucifer, the father of Hallel, who was the, the cherubim that was supposed to be in the choir director of the choir in heaven. But when he fell, he saw his addition for time and he, he took out a, a, a third of the angels and followed after him. And then but they returned. But on earth, see, the angels were, were in the place of full knowledge. On earth, we're born without that knowledge. We have to come into the knowledge of the Most High. We have to press to find that relationship with our Father. But His arms are open wide, His hands are open wide, and He watches over us and He, he reveals Himself. When, a, when you call upon His name and you say, Father, help me, He, he meets you in a time of need, in a time of trouble. When, when people say, Oh, no, your boss calls, your Father in heaven is already ready made a provision for your way to everlasting life. It's not about as will that any should perish, but that all come to life. Paul talked about this. I'm going to open up and read this in the Corinthians. But it's interesting because in, in prison, there will be men that they commit abominable acts and because they're the aggressor they don't think that they're the, the offender they think the victim was the offender but they're but that's not what the bible says the bible speaks against all forms of depravity and, and corruption don't you know that you were created in the image of the most high. Not only that, every man and woman was created in the image. If you if you despise your neighbor who was created in the image of God, do you truly can you truly say that you love God? If you love your father, you love all his children. Yeah. Here it is. Chapter 6, 1 Corinthians, 9th verse, says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicator, nor idolater, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, no revivers, no extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And in such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. And that's a wonderful thing to see, the power of salvation. That once even Paul himself was a, he was a murderer, but 
he became a, a, one of the greatest soldiers of the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, the devil was a big fool in, in all eternity. But he knew, he's in full knowledge, he made his decision. We on earth, we have this grace to have like babies not knowing the left from the right are not held accountable for what we do not know, but we come into the knowledge of the truth, we come into a relationship, when we come into his presence and then you meet him for yourself, you, you learn about a love that covers a multitude of faults. I, I think about a love, you know, how a father loves us. Now, a, a lot of people may look at decisions I've made in my life. I happen to be uh, a musician. I love to play music. Now, if I wanted to be a wealthy man, that's not the best decision. Some people would say I'm crazy because I, I do things that I like to do rather than that make money. And, and, and likewise, there may be people, there are different, a lot of people that do things that I don't think are the same. But that doesn't mean I don't love you. That doesn't mean I can't love you. I might not, I might not think you're the virus group me on the block, but that doesn't mean I don't love you. I can, I can still, he loves us while we're not perfect. He still, he reaches out to us. Yeah, even while we're in our sin and trespasses. I remember one of the that in my the greatest love is that love is my love. Now, there's a lot of folks that did you wrong, but he still loves them. The people that, that stole from him, they, they abuse his kindness, but he still loves the people. Because our Father in Heaven gave this kind of love. This is this is a virtue of the Holy Spirit to have the forgive, ability to forgive offenses and to love in spite of those things we don't agree. We love one another, even as we love ourselves. I'm going to give an invitation and in the sound of my voice. Receive this testimony. My eyes have seen the king. I've seen heaven. I've seen hell. It's very real. I, I've been before the throne in heaven and I've also seen through the door to hell. And the portion of hell that was revealed to me was a bottomless pit where the fire was so hot there was no smoke in it. And I know that if I turn away from my father, then that would be, that'll be my eternity. And I have no intent to go there. But this place called heaven is very real. Well, we got a lot of, we got a lot of witnesses. I, I often talk about how uh, the medical, uh, medical books around the world, we have a record of a thousand people who died and then were resuscitated, having seen either heaven or hell. And coming from different backgrounds, it didn't matter if they're Buddhist or Baptist or Catholic or atheist or what have you. But they all spent those, the man and wife with the world detailing everything they ever did from the view of an angel. Seeing heaven, the scripture they have I read the book of the book of Imagine Him. I love that book. And so, when you gather a lot of testimony, and they don't know it begins to make a case that it was beautiful. That's not like the court. See, if, if you go to court, and you ain't have three witnesses, but they don't agree, then, then, then your, your, your case won't stand. But we have thousands of witnesses here alive today, 
I can personally tell you how when my back was broken, he healed me. My eye was paralyzed when I fell out of trees when I was in kindergarten. When, when I was working construction and my back went out in, in three places because I wasn't the crane. I was trying to work the crane. I, I couldn't, I wasn't the crane. Anyway, my back was set up like Dr. Foot down me. But I fell the hands of my king, just rolled down my spine and put every bone back into place. I know a man who, who has deliverance from us. He's been smoking cigarettes for, for so many decades. His lungs are full of power. He, he, he spent so bad that he didn't even have to be smoking. His, his, this is, his exhale would stink of a whole house just in, in, in a minute. He'd come into the house and a whole house would stink like a, uh, like a water pipe, like a bomb is filled out. But he asked for prayer and the Lord will hear him. And of all men, his lungs were made as clean as a newborn baby. I, I've seen miracles, I've experienced miracles. And so I come as an eyewitness and say, it's real. Seek it for yourself. Because ultimately, it, it's not a book that can save you. It's a relationship with your father. It's a relationship to know your Savior. When you hear his voice and he calls you by name and, and he calls you his own. And he spoke to me one morning. He told, told me he'd never leave, never forsake me. He'd always be with me. Man, I, I, this is something I hold on to. I, wrote, I, I recently made a video called Following Jesus into the Shabbat of Yeshua HaMashiach. Here we find in the book of Revelation that those who keep his commandments, they shall enter into eternal life. He is the way to eternal life. Blessed are all may you trust him. Amen.